welcome back everybody. I'm Kalani and this is World Drum Club and in this video I'm going to show you how to map out the notes on a hand pan or tongue drum if you don't know what the notes are. So this could be useful for anybody, maybe you got gifted a, a, a tongue drum, a hand pan, a tank drum, anything like this. Uh, we're going to figure out how to find out the notes and you can see right here I've got a tuner. So you're going to want to have some sort of tuner to go through this process. Now, I will say that many manufacturers, including the people who made this drum, which is Kosmoski, have tuning maps available on their websites for download. So you can usually do some research online, find the tuning note map, or the note map, or the tuning for a uh, hand pan, tank drums, steel tongue drums, and just about any tuned idiophone, right? Any fixed tuning instrument. Now, that being said, if you can't find it, or you don't know, or you want to figure out the notes yourself, this video is for you. So you're going to need a tuner. You'll probably want to have, well, you'll need your instrument. You'll need a tuner. Uh, you might want to have a pen and paper handy. So I'll walk you through what we're going to do. Let's get started. So I'm going to show you from the overhead view. And you can see the tuner uh, reacting. We're going to use the tuner in a second, but you see how it reacts to the notes that I play, right? So that's how we're going to find out the actual notes. First of all, you could make a little map like I have. Isn't this excellent? Uh, make a map of your instrument. And it can be rough like this one. It's fine. We're just going to use it to jot down some notes, literally. So let's, let's start. So what I'm going to do here is just, I'll, let's start at the bottom, let's start with the lowest note, and play the note. There's the pitch, F sharp. So I'm going to, I'm not going to use this as a table, but I'm going to write F sharp right there in the middle. And let's keep going. And I'm going to go through this whole instrument right now. We can go quick. B. Let's go side to side. E. Pretty easy, you guys, right? It's pretty straight ahead. Now notice, I have another F sharp. Notice that I am dampening the prior notes just to make it easy for the tuner. And you can hear, presumably, that this drum has uh, multiple octaves of some of the same notes. But we're gonna go over that right now. All right, you guys, there's my map, done. I know it's kinda hard to read down here. This is actually, let me see, I can fix that. <laughs> my F looked like an E and my E looked like an F. So down here, I've got an F sharp. We've got an F sharp here and an F sharp here. So that's our octave notes. We got three F sharps, the most of any. Now we've got uh, a couple Bs, one there and one over here, and et cetera. All right, so we've got a couple Bs, a couple Ds, a couple Es. Uh, one C sharp, um, and uh, yeah, that's it, a couple Ds, and one A, one C sharp and one A. So again, um, let's listen from the bottom up. All right, so now we've got our note map, but so what, what does that mean? How can you go to the, to the next step, which is figure out, one, the key of your instrument or the probable key of your instrument, and two, can you start to create chords or chord areas or tonality areas so you could play two kind of chords back and forth, for example. That might be the first goal. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. All right, so first of all, you can, now you can look up this information. I happen to know this information because I am a 
trained musician and I have music theory background, but if you don't have music theory background, probably the most likely path you could use to find the key is to do a little bit of counting. And in this case, we're going to count the, the letter names that have sharps on them. And we're going to see which ones, we're going to count what letters we have that have sharps. We don't have any flats. You can also do this with flats. But in this case, we just have sharps. So in this tuning, there's two letter names that have sharps. One is F sharp, and the other one is C sharp, or F and C both have sharps. Uh, and then those are also repeated. We have three F sharps, we have one C sharp, but that, that doesn't really matter right now. What's important is that we've identified that we have all naturals except we have an F sharp and a C sharp, right? That's all we need to know. So we have two different notes that have sharps. Well, there's two possible keys that could have two sharps in the usual scale, tonality. We're using Western harmony right now. Uh, Western music theory. There's two keys. One is D major. So if you looked up which keys have two sharps, right? If you Google that, one of them is going to be D major, and the other one is going to be what we call the relative minor, uh, which in this case is B minor. The relative minor, you go from the major, you take the major key, and uh, you would, well, there's a couple different ways to do it, actually. Um, yeah, let's just stick with that. Let's just, I'm not going to get into any more detail. There's two keys. One is D major and one is B minor. Both of those keys have two sharps in them. And they're the same sharps, F sharp and C sharp. All right. So that's all, that's one way you can zero in on, uh, the key. Now you may not know, okay, I've got two keys. Which one is it? Well, at, at this point, you really need to do some listening and maybe some math, figure it out, you know, do some listening and, and see what the most likely, if you can't hear it right away, uh, what is the most likely key for your uh, tank drum, hand pan, whatever the instrument is. Now, in this case, we've got a couple clues. One is, what's the biggest note? The biggest note is F sharp. And then what's the next note up? Is B. Now what that tells me is these notes are emphasized. And they also have a certain relationship, which is a 5-1. Um, also, there's more F sharps. And there's a couple Ds, but there's two Bs and three F sharps. And so if we, if we start up at the top, kind of, you know, just listen to kind of where we land. We land on B, and then we have a F sharp, which is our fifth degree of the scale in B minor. And so it kind of points us to this note on the top here, this lowest of the edge notes. So, uh, if we are going to deduce or induce the key of this instrument, we could pretty much safely say this instrument is tuned to B minor. Now, it also can play in D major because that's a relative major, but it's basically tuned to, to B minor. All right, so that we know. Now, we've got the key and we figured that out. So that, that method is gonna work pretty well for you to uh, find the, the basic key of your instrument. Uh, again, just search, you know, what, what is the keys that have three flats or what is the key that has one sharp and blah, 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 and just do that. And then try to listen to it, figure out which notes are accentuated or, or brought forward. What are the salient tones? What are the main tones of your instrument? Uh, and just listen to it and see if it has that minor sound or that major sound. But even if you can't tell the difference between a minor sound and a major sound, maybe you could figure it out just by sort of looking at it and saying, well, this note seems to be a main note. This note seems to be a primary note. Everything kind of leads in this direction. I think it's the, the minor or the, or the major key. All right, now, 
What if we want to start to divide up the instrument in terms of chord tones or complementary tonalities? Um, I like to play tank drums of all types, hand pans, tank drums. And what I'll often do is I'll find two main tonalities back and forth. Um, and here's a really easy way that you can, you can do that. Uh, first of all, we're going to separate the instrument. Let me show you. Uh, we're going to separate adjacent notes. And since I already know this is in B minor, I can do this fairly easily, but I'll just give you the basic rule. And that is that if we start at the root note, in this case, B, right, B minor, what we're going to do is we're going to categorize the chord tones in terms of skipping every, um, every other, we're going to group them in terms of every other letter going up the alphabet, just going up. And you know, it repeats after G, so it's only A to G. And we're going to count, in this case, we're starting on B, because it's B minor. It doesn't really matter where you start, but we're going to start on the, you do need to start on the, the key letter, basically. Um, or at least play from there. All right, so B, now the next note, the next letter note up would be C. In this case, it's C sharp. So what I'm gonna do here, I'll just do this um, on this piece of paper, is we will mark, let's mark red and yellow. Let's mark, starting with B, we're gonna mark red, All right? Just mark a red B. And then the next note up is C, so we're gonna do yellow. And then the next note up after C is D. And then E, and we're alternating, so E is yellow, D was red. F, sharp, right, gets red. And there's three of those. And then the next note would be G, but there's no Gs on this handpan. So then the next note would be A, and we could put that, we could put that in the red category. And that's basically it. And then I'm just gonna fill in uh, the E over here is yellow, the D is red, and the B is red. So we have a lot of red, and that's okay. So if we take a look at this now, and I hope you guys can see this, I know the yellow is kind of hard to see, but We've got all of this area, all, everything on the left side is red, and the center is red, and then we have this one note over here, which I think could go either way, actually. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in the either, either side category. And then we've got uh, notes over here on the right side that are absolutely in the yellow category. All right, so let's listen to, I'm gonna put these caps back on real quick because you know how, how those like to dry out. Let's listen, um, and actually, you know what? I'm gonna make this easy. I'm gonna get some tape. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna use, I just happen to have some yellow tape. So guess what we're gonna do with the yellow tape? <laughs> we're gonna mark the yellow notes with the yellow tape. And we need to have the E and the C sharp. Oh, that's the A, okay. Am I missing a note? Hold on. Oh, that's the A. That's C sharp, yeah, that's right. And then an E, and that's it, over here. All right, so now, look at this. Those are our yellow notes. And I may put one here too, I don't know. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do this, we'll do, we'll do a yellow red. So that'll be optional. Okay, now let's listen first to the yellows all together. Let's throw in the A. <laughs> Pretty major. All right, and now let's listen to the other side where we, we skipped every other letter. All right, and now. So 
that's actually, for those of you who are wondering, that's an A major chord. A major, and then B minor. Okay, so, now these aren't the only chords that we could play. I'm gonna grab another mallet real quick. And sometimes what I like to do is, is how, if I'm teaching or I'm, I'm giving an instrument for, to somebody to play, I will associate a color with a mallet color and also the colors on the instrument or a side on the instrument. And in this case, it's pretty easy because all of the chord tones kind of ended up on each side, which could, it's often the case. They end on A major. All right, gang. So that is pretty much what I have for you uh, in this video. Um, I hope this is helpful. Uh, you know, you can map out uh, instruments in different ways. This this is one way that if you end up uh, marking some of the some of the notes uh, with one color and then the other ones with a different color or no color, you can easily do what I just did and create two different chord areas uh, and you can do more than that you can if you have a lot of notes on your instrument you could even do three chords or f maybe four chords and play different chord progressions but you know what one of the reasons that we like hand pans and tank drums and tongue drums and these instruments is because they're just easy to play and they generally come with a scale that doesn't have all the notes and that's good because it makes it easy to just play any notes and they all sound good together. I call that the wind chime effect, you know, where we have a fixed scale. Usually it's a pentatonic scale, five note scale. It doesn't have all the, tone, the notes on the keyboard. It's not a chromatic scale. It's maybe not even a diatonic scale, uh, which would be like the, the white keys on the piano. It's got fewer than that. And that makes it easy to play. But if you do have an instrument that has more chord tones, more notes, and you'd like to break them up, this is a way to do that, all right? What do you think, you guys? Is this useful? Did you like this content? If so, like it, subscribe to the channel so you get updates and you don't miss anything. Hit that bell. And uh, I'm Kalani, and I'll see you guys in a future video. Thanks for stopping by World Drum Club.